uh, based at the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. Uh, and do you have any um, slides to present, uh, Professor? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should I share? Yes, please. Um, let's see if I can find where my slides are. Right there. Um, share screen. Um, no. Uh, there. Let's see if this works. Yeah. I can see, I can certainly see your screen. Yeah, let's see if it goes full screen. Okay. Very good. Yes, so thank you for, for inviting me to, uh, to speak at this session and especially answer questions. So this is not a, a common, those are mainly on performance tuning, but I don't know if that's the main interest of the audience. So please interrupt and ask questions and we can go in any direction. I also have, have other material if necessary. Um, so Gromax works performance-wise got a lot faster recently, and we have more support for different GPUs, but not particularly different ways of using it very much, except for lots of GPU details, but those tend to change fast. So I had, haven't included those, but there, if there are questions, I'm happy to answer it. So that's, of course, where most of, of the performance is to be had, but that depends a lot on the hardware you have. Um, and as in far, as far as correctness is concerned, oh, there, I mean, we haven't changed anything. I mean, Gromax was correct since a long time and is still correct. So maybe more than 10 years ago, we had approximations to make things faster, but nowadays we do things right as most codes in this community do. Okay, so uh, let's see if I can change slides. Yes, so Gromax um, does classical molecular dynamics. There are some efforts on, oh, sorry, on, on bringing Q QMMM again um in a better shape than we had it um with, or to, to link to, to cp2k and probably also other codes but i won't that either it mostly targets problems from biochemistry but there's also material science and i'm personally i'm, I'm working on, on flow kind of problems so big um simulations of um Water droplets and of, of, of wetting problems containing millions of atoms, tens of millions, yeah, till millions to tens of millions of atoms. So that's also becoming a more important large by far as the biochemistry field, which is really large. So it's free and open source. Currently, it's C17 is our standard, at least for the next release, maybe not for the current 2021. I'm not even sure why we switched to C17 requirements. Developed by multiple institutions, although the main weight of developers is currently at KTH in Stockholm. And used by well hundreds of research groups could be thousands or, or more since we can't track how many people use it that's difficult to say and currently the main funding source is by excel from which I'm, I'm speaking here um but we also have uh swedish funding from circ and we have other changing fundings depending yeah depending on the projects we have <clears throat> um, and of course people contributing from from other places they have funding from usually from from somewhere else again okay um so Yes, yeah, systems, we, a typical simulation system is, is, is given here. Of course, though you, it, Gromax can simulate anything um, containing atoms with classical force fields. Uh, a, a reasonable fraction of the simulations is such kind of things, either proteins in solution or membrane proteins, like here is drawn with some artistic picture where we have a protein and a membrane, uh, where you see the two leaflets in blue here, and uh, a color protein and some counter ions and some alcohol molecules, I think, because here we want to know how alcohol affects this, this, this particular um, 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 signaling protein. Uh, so such kind of systems one, one would like to simulate and as fast as possible and correct as well, of course. So these are systems in the, or, in the size of uh, 150,000 to 200,000 atoms. So those are 
a very common size. You can have also simulate something much smaller or, or bigger. But often in biomolecular simulations, one of the main issues is that simulations are the size of the system is given by what you want to what you're after. So if you want to study this molecule, that's the size you have. There's not something much bigger than. And this is an issue for scaling on, on especially modern machines, which are going towards the exascale, because this is a limited size system. So you can't scale it to the whole of an exascale machine for sure by itself. So for that, you need to work on ensemble techniques and, and these kind of things, which are somewhat beyond the scope of, of this presentation and session, but I'll go at least into running sim multiple simulations together, how you can do that efficiently. Um, Okay, but you, of course, might be simulated, simulating something completely different, something of your own interest, but this should be some general recommendations. Um, so then one question is, does Gromax performance optimization matter? Well, it's, it's usually the quality of science in general depends on the number of independent configurations sampled. So that holds generally in a particular for MDs a problem since you often cannot sample enough. So you need to, would like to sample more than you can. So that's why it's important to have Good performance to sample within the given wall cloth time or the given time that you have on the supercomputer to sample as much as possible. So for Gromax, the default performance is pretty good. Um, so you can say if you're a beginner, you don't need to bother too much. I mean, things will run quite okay, especially often compared to other codes. Um, yeah, if you can do something else, then okay. Uh, so, but if you're running many simulations of the same kind, as often the case, particularly on the same kind of hardware, which is also often the case on your supercomputer or local cluster, then it might be worth to optimize the performance there. Um, and of course, yeah, you do, do need to bother if the resources cost more than your time. So um, in, in, the, in a situation where you need to run many simulations on the same machine, which is very often the case, it's worth looking into how to optimize the performance. Um, so what do you need to consider? Well, you need to consider how Gromax was built. Um, I'll shortly go into that, what we want to simulate, how we want to simulate it. You need to know how Gromax works inside so that I won't go into any detail here at all since there's not enough time. Um, what hardware will we use and how do we map the simulation to the hardware and how do we find out what might be improved? So for the last point, I think I'll, I'll leave that to the question answer session. So if you have particular problems or things we might be able to, to actually discuss those, I think that's more useful to discuss in terms of an example. Okay, um, so let's start at the beginning. So nowadays I think Gromax, building Gromax is not really critical any, anymore because most compilers are quite good and it's quite standard to have GCC or even modern Clang is pretty good. So I think this is rather uncritical nowadays. Um, CUDA is also um, mature. OpenCL is a bit of an issue for AMD GPUs because uh, that's being phased out likely, but okay. Um, you need an MPI library. So about the only thing you need to worry about somewhat is how to configure the, 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 the FFT dot library, which for which you usually use FFTW for the PME electrostatics, since that can be a lot slower if you don't use um, SMD to use, make use of your hardware, like usually enable SSE2 and enable, SSE, uh, enable AVX or AVX2, depending on your hardware flags. Uh, so you need both those uh, flags. Uh, that might affect performance, especially if you're limited by that. But if you, use this flag here for Gromax to build with your own FFT, then um, it sets those automatically. So even that's not an issue. So the only thing there are requirements, if you want to run on multi-nodes, you need MPI. Um, if you have a single node, you don't need MPI because Gromax has internal thread MPI. So that usually works. So about the only thing you hear is that you don't need double precision. So you only need that if you really know why you need it. So in general, most users don't need that at all. So that would lose a lot of performance. So I think this, this became easy nowadays. That's not problematic anymore. Um, then um, preparing for simulation is rather important. So here one can gain performance by having a, a simulation cell that's the right shape, just large enough for a science and your physical model, but not too small that you get artifacts. Um, we have the, the virtual side trick. I think you should, should read about that in the reference to double the time step which we hope to have multiple time stepping to replace that, which works now in the newest version, but um, it doesn't work fully stably. So we need, to, we need to work on that before we can advise everybody to use it. Um, otherwise, our advice nowadays for normal simulation setup is to use uh, links for bond constraints and constrain only H bonds for the force field. Uh, sorry, because the force fields use that usually. So not all bonds as we used to do in Gromax. So this is faster and it's more correct for the force field. So that's um one 
small consideration that both improves improves performance and correctness. It doesn't have large effect, but it's anyhow since both the performance and the correctness goes up, that's worth doing. Yeah, typical water models are rigid here. Let's see. Yeah, I think the rest of the water model. Uh, this is probably old notes. You should use the water model for your force field usually, unless you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, so preparation, I think nowadays also unproblematic, rather standard. So then. Um, there are some considerations how to choose your simulation setup. So um, one issue that can quickly happen is if you decide to, for instance, write coordinates and velocities every step, then you can very quickly fill up your disk. So you might bring down a whole machine in that way because you can write data very quickly if you do a thousand steps per second and you write 100,000 coordinates and velocities per, per step, then you, yeah, you write a lot of data. And it's usually it's useless. So you you it's good to think about how much data you need, not too little, not too much. You can always reduce it afterwards. But then I think, yeah, you don't need to, you shouldn't use coupling algorithms every step. That also hurts performance, but I think these are by default set up quite okay now. So you should do, there are several NST parameters if you look in the parameter setup. Um, then a critical thing for the correctness is that you should use the, the Leonard Jones or Van der Waals cutoff as part of your force field. So you should use what the force field has used. Same thing for dispersion correction, which is linked to that, which is not mentioned here. So this is rather critical. If you change this, then your simulation results might not be correct or match what's intended with the force field. So you shouldn't mess with that. Um, the Coulomb cutoff doesn't matter because we usually use particle mesh evolved and there you can do what you want, but you I mean you, do, you can use a longer cutoff there in principle, like Romex does internally, it now tunes automatically. Um, so you can, you can here trade off um, or not trade off. You can run at the same accuracy with different parameters, but Unfortunately, we don't have an um, accuracy input setting for this for the user. So this is a complicated part. So usually you can you can you, you can use standard parameters there, but yeah, there are some considerations. I think we have those in the user guides also. So there's a lot of information in, in, in the user guides too, if you want to see details. So there's a how-to here linked to at the top. And there's a user guide which gives more details about different options here. So um, I won't go into, into further details here. You can find all those on manual.gromax.org. If you go around there, I think all the information should be there. So this presentation is mainly to, to, to give you awareness of the different considerations um, you uh, should have when running simulations. Um, yeah, then for good performance, you get appropriate hardware. So, well, if either you have access to, to, uh, to uh, um, a hardware at a compute center. In that case, you have what you have. But um, if you buy your own hardware, then there's this very nice paper. I should have I should have put a picture here and this is more bang for the buck, it's called, which is here at this, at this link, which uh, looks at all different kinds of configurations of GPUs and CPUs. So this is by now again outdated, this is from 2018. We had a version before in 2015. So since the developments go quick, these things tend to get outdated. But there you can see for different for different simulation types and for different hardware combinations what performance you get. So you can choose the best setup for the price. Um, yeah, then considerations here is that if you have multiple GPUs, since the overhead is high of moving data, data between them and the CPU, you need about 10,000 of particles per GPU to use multiple GPUs. Um, and as GPUs get bigger, this gets more and more problematic. So this is a big challenge for us working on Gromax to to yeah, to still still scale to multiple GPUs here since this is a uh, they're getting bigger and bigger and uh, simulations are not getting much bigger so this is hard. Uh, yeah, for for if you want to run a multiple nodes, you need some fast internet gigabit. Probably now this is yeah this is an old slide. Probably have ten gigabit Ethernet now, but that's usually okay. It's often the PCI bus which is also slow. Memory and disk don't matter for 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 Gromax, and you can even run on cloud resources, but you should avoid running inside virtual machine machines. So. Nowadays, it's, yeah, even that's a feasible so, so solution. Uh, um, it of course costs you, but in the end, it's, the prices are, are quite competitive. Um, a homogeneity is much better, so you want your homogeneous resources are good. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot more to say about hardware also, but uh, I think I'll leave it at this. If there are more questions, I can talk about this later. So then, um, here are some, some tips for running different setups. So here's, and you run on a single CPU only node. So then you can use the default build, which compiles with our thread MPI support. So we, we use, we emulate MPI using threads. So you can run um, 
domainic composition as we have, which I don't have a picture of here. So, but then MD Run can automatically choose how many domains it uses. Uh, so you can vary that by hand by using the NT MPI flag. Um, and you can use NT OMP to set the number of threads per, per rank to use here. Although everything is threads, of course. Um, yeah, so hyperthreading, I think nowadays is quite good. So this used to be somewhat of an issue, but I think nowadays hyperthreading is usually good for CPUs. But then, so then you can choose different different setups of, of this. This might might be worth trying if you're on many simulations. So if you have 16 cores, for instance, you can run 16 ranks, so 16 domains, one thread or eight domains, two threads, four domains, four threads to use all the hardware. And you can use hyperthreading, you can double the numbers. Um, yeah, so more examples are in the user guide. So, but um, this is uh, basically the only thing you need to try here. So that's rather doable. Then if you go to a single CPU, uh, GPU plus CPU node, then you can run part of Chromex on the CPU and part on the GPU. So here there's a, a lot more options now to divide tasks, but the default is quite okay. I think here again, I would refer to the user guide for more um, examples here, but now you can, now you can vary things. So if you have two, two GPUs, you can run, for instance, here in examples, you could run two domains, one on each GPU um, with this many threads, but you could also, it might actually be faster in, in many cases to run, to run multiple domains on one GPU since then the GPU can balance out a lot better and it's idle less. So maybe the optimal case here would be four domains and four threads, and then you use two domains per, per GPU since it can then overlap the work better. So one can play around with these kind of things and see what happens. Um, uh, yeah, there's and see this varying. I think this this is probably also I should I should remove this. This is now automated and this is insensitive. So this in the, in the what is it in the, since 2020? I think this is not important anymore. Uh, that's automated and not sensitive anymore. So that's that's easy. So that can be removed. Then on multi-node clusters, things are more complicated. Um, Maybe you've seen some examples of that in the previous in the previous talk. So here you need to build an MPI enabled Gromax, um, and but then it becomes very network dependent. So, and this is an issue already on good hardware, which is not busy because data needs to go over the network, and that's often latencies are play a strong role there because Gromax has so fast iterations; it can do about a thousand iterations per second or more. So. Uh, it's very latency sensitive, but then um, if you have other jobs on the on the on the machine, then they can interfere. So this quickly gets pro problematic. So the performance might vary a lot depending on what other jobs are running. Also, uh, so requesting nodes close in the network space can help. So we've been experimenting with this. So this is uh, very annoying and, and tedious. Um, yeah, you can optimize MPI li MPI li li libraries for this, but this gets very technical. You should talk to your computer center for those kind of things. But what you can do is you can uh, you can, um, which I haven't explained, this one can have separate ranks for the for the PME mesh calculation, which is a rather different calculation from the rest that can be split off to separate MPI ranks. And then, but then you can play with the number of those. So those you need to preset. Um, so there's an NPME option. Oh, sorry, there should be a dash here. Um, so if you run many rank, uh, many many domains, many nodes, then it's worth playing around with that number to see how well things work. So you have GMX Chumpy me that can do this for you automatically. If you look in the manual there, you can see how that works. It's, it, it, it runs some steps in different configurations and tries different things. So then, yeah, the, these, not, these PMEB ranks should, should rather be um, a divisor of the of the number of, of, of how we call PP ranks of the rest. So because we need to communicate data between them. So it's nice if they have a lot of large common factors. So this starts getting complicated because um, of the way things communicate and the way Gromax is set up. So I think I'll, I won't go into more detail here. There was a slide originally also on, on mixed G CPU, GPU, but I removed that because it gets even more, skipped that because it gets even more complicated because then you have to also worry about how many GPUs you have, um, where they are, how they communicate. Um, so that's something, um, um, even even more complicated and depends a lot on the hardware and it might this might improve as Gromax improves. Um, um, yeah, if you have CPU only multi-node clusters, let's see what do we have. Yeah, if it's 
What's the difference here? That's about the same, yes. Right, so you can choose, I think there's no difference here. No, yeah, oh, sorry, it's a continuation. It shows what command line you should use. So you should use MPI run with the number of, of ranks, and then you can you can decide how many threads you want per rank, which usually fills up the whole machine. If you don't give this, it automates, that usually works. So, you, but you can choose how many ranks you want for, for the PME or many threads for the PME ranks also. Again, I think I refer to the user guide here because I think you quickly get lost uh, if I try to explain all this. Um, but it's important to realize that there are many options one can tune here and uh, these kind of things can affect performance a lot. So it's worth looking into. Um, okay, so then one of the most important aspects here is, is this PME tuning. So because you have some ranks running PME and some ranks running the rest, if, if one of the set goes faster, then you're wasting time on those because they're idling. So that's why, uh, well, we nowadays we have automated PME tuning running, so to balance the load, but that um, can only do a bit of tweaking. Um, in the end, it's it's probably usually worth if you run need to run many simulations to try how many ranks you need here for this MPME, as I said. Um, yeah. So you can also use GPUs, but there's, there's, not, there's not, not so many layouts possible here. So with PME on, on GPU, it usually, currently it runs only on a single GPU anyhow there. So that would only work if you have two GPUs, three or four, not more. We're working on, on parallel GPU PME um, that's coming. So if you have many GPUs, you would usually run PME on the CPU and not on the GPU. So I don't have examples here, I think, of how to choose that now that you can find in documentation. So automatically, Gromax or MD run. If you start it by default, it will choose something not unreasonable. So it's it will it will run and it will use all resources, but maybe not in an optimal way. Um, yeah. Then strong scaling versus throughput. So this is also an, always an important consideration. So usually, as I said, you want you need for science you need a lot of samples. So often you anyhow run the same system multiple times. Uh, maybe with different initial velocities to create more data, more samples. So if you need anyhow need many copies of, of, of similar simulations, then and then you can wait longer to get the full set of results and a finite resources, which is usually the case, then you can um, run multiple simulations uh, together. So you can run, for instance, here we show with MPI run, we run on 16 ranks, you can run with the dash multi there option, you can you can give directories like here A, B, C, and D. Um, you can run uh, multiple simulations at the same time uh, in different directories. So this allows you either to have one large job which you need to schedule that runs multiple simulations, or conversely, which I think we don't have. Oh yeah, here we have that. You can you can use GPUs more efficiently. So a GPU is usually idling some for some time on a single simulation. So if I have, for instance, two GPUs and four simulations, I can mix them and you can mix them in different ways to assign uh, different domains of each of the simulations to different GPUs. And this way you can create more um, concurrency. and You can use the GPU to near 100%, which is not possible with a single simulation. So this makes more efficient use of, of resources. Uh, and even management wise for you, it's easier because you run through four simulations at once. You don't need to keep track of four in, independent um, jobs running. So this is this is quite useful to, to improve uh, throughput with this. You can, it's easier to get to the maximum throughput possible on hardware, especially with GPUs. <clears throat> um, so then how you can actually measure performance. So you can you can use the production system. You have the TPR, you can run a few, few thousand steps to permit tuning and load balancing to, to stabilize, and then you can reset the counters and then observe performance. And this way you can do a short run, like here's an example, command line, run 6,000 steps and you reset at 5,000 steps, you, you reset the counter. So you measure only over the last thousand. I think these numbers are probably too small. It should probably be 60,000 to 50,000 or so. To, to get some reliable measurement. But this way you can you can quickly measure within a few minutes, you can measure how fast your, your run is by uh, allowing for tuning of the PME and the load balancing and uh, also the warm up of the CPUs and GPUs and then measure. So that's a way to have reliable, quick performance measurements. 
um, which you should aim for running a few minutes probably. Um, then uh, there's a log file, which I won't have examples of. We can use if people have questions, we can see later, uh, where it just gives you a summary of the hardware and software configuration at the start. Um, it also gives all the information about your, 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 your physical simulation settings. It reports on how the simulation has been set up just before it starts. So what ranks are used, uh, how many threads, what's run on GPU, what's run on CPU. And then there's an analysis of the wall time at the end. So from this, you can see um, what part of the time is spent in which uh, part of the code. Uh, and then you can, you can diff such files with different settings or in different hardware to see where the times differ. And if you change settings, what the effect they had. So uh, there's a quite, you can do quite a lot of analysis just looking at log files. You don't need to profile the code. Uh, so you can, even if you don't understand exactly what's happening, you can often infer from that what the effects are of what you've done. If you have a basic understanding of the different things that you need to compute in an MD simulation. Um, right, so that was what I had prepared in terms of best practices for performance and a bit on, on, on correctness as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see, there's already some questions in the chat. Yes. Um, so Shall first I go one... through those first? Yeah, so the first one we've got is from Jamshed, so asking yes. whether you can say a bit more about the, yes. M the MPI and NTO OMP parameters. Yes, so that's, um, that's a bit of a confusing <laughs> thing we have in Gromax. So since, as I said, we have this thread MPI library, as we call it, so that emulates for us MPI, but using threads. So you ah. have, you have diff multiple ranks, but those are not real processes. They're they are just threads. But in this way, we can we without having to code completely new code paths, we can still use the main decomposition and and the same mm. communication setup to um, that we have for for normal MPI communication. So did this this anti MPI gives the number of MPI threads, which corresponds from the code point of view exactly to MPI ranks real processes, but mm. in fact it's threads. So this means you can choose how many domains you want to have in your domain decomposition. Okay. Um, so the number of total threads is used is the mul is the product of anti MPI and anti OpenMP, and mm. anti OMP, which is the number of OpenMP threads. So that's the classical OpenMP thread number. Yeah. So this um, this option this anti anti MPI option did disappears if you have a real MPI build, because then you set it mm. for MPI. Yeah. No, I was going because I was going to say I was because I mean I was going to ask a supplementary question. It was because is because uh, with you know, with. Because I'm guessing you don't necessarily need that option if you if you're using well if you if if you if your sort of uh, MPI setup is is there it's available to allow for hyperthreading. Um, well, hyperthreading is a different thing. That that's used depending on how many threads you launch. Ah, okay. that's so so that depends if you if you launch as many threads as you have physical cores, then you don't get hyperthreading. If you use twice as many launch twice as many then you do get it but that depends on what you launch so but that's and that's in turn depends on how this thing is set up so if you're running on a supercomputer yeah. the supercomputer might actually the, the the scheduling system or the mpi run might actually uh, set that for you so you can't so you so you, you, you have that given so okay. actually gromax checks if, if if it's already set by something else and then tries not to mess with it but you can still override it with anti open nt omp if you want to um okay uh, and it depends if the, if the hardware on supercomputer has hyperthreading enabled. There was a period when many did not, but I think now usually do because the newer processors are usually somewhat better with hyperthreading than before. Um, so, so the next question is from Pedro asking: Has uh, Gromax been fully ported to AMD GPUs? Um, um, yeah. So that's. Um, that's um, a question with many answers. Um, <laughs> okay. So we have had since a very long time, we've had an OpenCL version, um, mm -hmm. which runs on any OpenCL supported GPU and yeah. optimized for AMD. Mm -hmm. But that had has limited support, lim more limited support compared to CUDA. So it's lagging somewhat behind. So that has support mm -hmm. for the non-bonded offloading and for PME, which are the two main components anyhow. So 
Um, that is quite performant, but now the question is what the future is of, of OpenCL. So, and the new machines like Lumi, it doesn't seem like they're going to be a good OpenCL support. So we're working on Sickle for that, right. but that's the massive effort. But we hope to have in the 2022 release, the, at least a non bonded should be on, available on Sickle and PME maybe. But then the whole hardware or the whole software stack is there is not fully reliable yet. So that should hopefully mature over the coming half year or year. So that's the current state of things. So, but if you have an older AMD uh, GPU, then uh, OpenCL works very well. This is yes. good optimized code. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually, the, the person who has asked that question has put that, raised their hand. Um, I, I, uh, would, you like to, would you like to unmute? Um, so, Pe Pedro, would you like to unmute and ask, a, if it, did you want to ask another question? Uh, it's asking you for permission. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hang on. Uh, I, I can see if I can ask, see if I can ask to unmute. Okay. Hey, yes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I hear yes. you. Yeah, what, yes, what, 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 what do you say you, you're, you're working on is SQL? SQL. SQL, I see. This SYCL. So that's, that's the, 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 the open standard, which seems to become the, the standard now among all hardware vendors, except NVIDIA for the moment. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it has been very uncertain for, for, for some time, but that seems to be the, what's happening now is that SQL is becoming the, the standard. So, which is a, uh, on the one hand, it's nice. It's a nice C++ standard, but it's the, the problem is that it's quite orthogonal to the way standard CUDA works. So it requires rewriting of the whole glue code. So re rewriting kernels for us is not such an, such an issue. We know how they work and it's rather straightforward, but rewriting glue code is annoying. So. This, this, is, and this is the the version that will you you will you will be running on Lumi, right? Yes, yes, okay. that's the plan. I see. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so there's some uh, some more questions. Uh, so there was one question about uh, whether or not you could explain a little bit more about the different options you showed for a node with GPU and CPU. So. As a supplemental um, about how to yes so models. let's see what I have on that slide uh, let's go back um, yeah there's there, there, there there's very very much to say about this unfortunately because it's really complicated <laughs> let's see multiple was it this one I multi simulation guess. or was it uh, this one I think it might have been that one yes I think, so, at least I think that's where we started. if you have if you have a if that's the question then um if you have a single simulation and you need to run it over, um, if it forms from one to two GPUs in a single node. So if, I mean, if you, I mean, running on single GPU is rather straightforward because you can run everything there without domain decomposition, although even mm -hmm. there sometimes it's faster. But if you have two, then you have to do something because you can't run without domain yeah. decomposition, at least in Gromax over two GPUs. So, mm -hmm. um, there's actually another option which I didn't mention here is you can run PME on one GPU and, and the rest on, on the other GPU, but then you need to be lucky that the, the load is roughly 50-50 or equal for those parts. Yeah. If that's the case, then that's that's going to be the most efficient. Um, but since that's often not the case, then then there's the option to run, well, either two, two domains, as you see the lower line on, on this slide with MTMPI2 mm -hmm. and run... Um, so you can specify which domain runs on which GPU. So you know zero one. So the first domain runs on GPU zero, the second on GPU one, which it would do by default. By the way, you don't need to give the GPU ID option here, mm -hmm. um, and the threads would also be default. So you actually only need to do MT API two, and you would get this automatically. But okay. it could actually be faster to run two domains on each GPU since then you have more concurrency. Um, so mm -hmm. the the GPU can't do anything while it's waiting for the data to arrive for the task, um, which we try to overlap because there are multiple tasks. So we can, we can, we can, if we can send over data for one task, it can compute on that while the data for the other task might need to come in, but then many need the coordinates and so. So it could actually be better to run, to run two domains on each 
GPU here, as we see in this middle line with NTMPI4. Again, you don't, you wouldn't need to give the other options. That would be default. Um, but we show them here to see what show what happens. So you can run domains zero and one on on GPU zero and domains two um, two and three on the other GPU. Then you have more concurrency, and then now you can transfer the the data. For instance, they will it it will by default it will be running out of sync somewhat because the GPU is fully asynchronous. So then mm. while data is transferring, or while you're running for one domain, you can transfer the data for the other domain. Mm -hmm. So this this tends to happen by itself so it can give better performance and then if you're anyhow running multiple then it might even be better to run even even more but that depends so you can try and see what what is better here so since 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 there's since yeah since Gromit internally i mean it doesn't it doesn't know anything it's it's transparent to how these things work except for load balancing but i don't want to go into those details i mean you can you can play around with many of such options that you can imagine you can do many things so uh, unfortunately, there are often quite some combinations to try, especially if PME ranks mm -hmm. come in. And then there's you can choose which task to run where. I didn't even say that. You can try to you can assign PME to the GPU or the CPU. You can assign bonds to the CPU or the GPU, and so on. So there's even more combinations there. So what we would actually need, since this is too much work for the user, obviously, I mean, it's, uh, you might already hard to follow what I'm saying. What you what we would like to have is to have an option that does something like Monte Carlo on the task placement and then moves the tasks around and then tries with maybe with machine learning or whatever to figure out what the, what the optimal setup is but the problem is of course this is a rather nasty optimization problem since you move something somewhere then then yeah the the resource tends to get overloaded because of that you need to move something else back so it's a very it's a very nasty optimization problem yeah yeah um i don't know if that somewhat answered the question here uh yeah I guess so. Um, uh, we've got another question asking if you were using if you use the MPI run NP sixteen option uh, with, yeah, with with the multi direct multi yeah. gear option and there are four directories. Yeah, yeah. then you get you, then you get four MPI ranks per per run in each directory. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. yeah yeah. yeah. Right. So you can so you can you can do whatever you want there. Of course, you can't this this. MP, you should have the number of ranks should be multiple of the number of directories. I think that's the only requirement. Yeah. Okay. So they're identical. We could even <laughs> vary that, but that I think we don't allow. But no, okay. yeah. So, so, you, so you can't allow different numbers of process. I don't because... think so. I'm not sure. Maybe we even have that option, but I don't think so. It's often, okay. often anyhow, since you're run, run, running similar runs, it doesn't really matter that much. So uh, this no. option was actually there originally to 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 work around requirements of of of, of HPC centers because they want big big parallel jobs. So then we disguised oh, yes. many runs as one big one. Um, yes. But nowadays it's actually it's 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 it, you can use this, the same setup is used for, for for replica exchange or other kind of exchange algorithms. So where you actually do have coupling and you need this. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that it's actually it's convenient for for managing jobs because uh, yeah, um, you you might get too too many jobs. So that's another topic which mm -hmm. we're currently uh working on this is somewhat off topic maybe here but this is one issue is as the computers get bigger and bigger you can of course run more and more runs and we have easily often in scientific problems enough enough um compute requirements but then you quickly get to having to manage thousands or ten thousands of runs and then if you throw that into a into a into a, a scheduler on the supercomputer, it might go down. So we, we've had that happen because someone submitted 100,000 jobs with Romex, then the whole supercomputer yeah. goes down. So then it's actually an advantage to be able to, to do this because then you take load off the scheduler. Yeah. Um, yeah. OK, um, so the, the next question there is, we support virtual sites in the future, or is this option locked? Will this option be deprecated? No, we'll we'll we will keep supporting this. So this works well, and it's no overhead in the code wise really to have that. Maybe we will we'll, we'll deprecate. What is it? We have this aromatic version, which is almost never used. And we're not sure mm -hmm. about that. But the standard one we'll we'll keep using, even even if we come up with a multiple time stepping scheme that might be better. I mean, there's no reason to mm -hmm. to not support it. It's little effort for us to support, and it's quite That's appreciated. Okay. I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's also another question about well. Sort of related from what we were talking about, you were talking about, we were just talking about before. Is it possible to run replica exchange in a single workstation or a single node? Uh, and the documentation, the document, uh, the documentation apparently 
seems to suggest it's only possible when, when you're using MPI. Yes, so that's indeed, so that's the, the only case where you would want to have MPI on, on a single node is to run replica exchange, but you can do that, of course, you can install MPI. Um, I have yes. MPI installed on my workstation and laptop, uh, especially for oh, this yeah. case. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then the next question is, so after saying creating residue files for new small molecules is rather challenging and opaque. Is there any more guidance other than in the manual? Oh, um, I, I, I suppose this is the, the topology files more here. Is the question, or is it is it residue topology? Since for for nor if it's small molecules, you usually directly write the topology here. Um, mm -hmm. So for that, I, yeah, that's that's problematic that we're aware of. Um, it's the question, though, if 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 uh, if Gromac should be doing this, or there are other tools that should take care of this. So we have we have we have um, uh, what's it called now? Someone here in Stockholm made this tool. Oh, I always forget the name. As a tool which 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 um, interfaces with three different tools, which is one is the GAF for generalized amber. It's the Charm. What's the Charm? General force field for drugs and such things, and there's mm -hmm. one more. So he has an the person here made an interface that that uh, automatically or that scripts everything there. So you can put in a topology in smiles or in two other formats or a, sorry molecule setup, and then it will spit out a topology mm -hmm. for you for one of these three force fields. Okay. So um, uh, it's probably useful to link to that. Maybe I can find it in the meantime and I can paste in. The okay. Link. Um, because doing it by hand is, yeah, I mean, this, this should be automated, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Now oh, there it is. What's it called again? No. Um, I still don't have the name where I have the paper. Where's the link? Uh, No. Okay. Well, sorry to find. Let's go to the next question. I'll try to find it in the meantime. Uh, I think we've actually run out of questions so far. Uh, unless anybody else wants to, to ask anything. Um, I'm Soon. And we've got to, uh, someone to put in a link for a uh, particular paper. Um, so there's a. Um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, the paper I found. Yes, exactly. That's the one. Yes, but I'm I'm trying ah. to find I'm trying to find the link the link to the to the tool itself, which I forgot the name of. If I have the name, then I'll have it. It's, it's, don't understand why it's too difficult to find to find the tool. Um, ah. Where is it supporting information? Is it here? Uh, <laughs> Come on. Uh, oh, links, no. oh, oh um, it's apparently called stage. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's exactly, okay. exactly. Is it stage or stages? I think just stage. Um, oh, I can check. I can check that as well. Uh, Right. Yes. Exactly. It's called stage. But where's the repository? I I, I actually never used it. I, I I'm not making molecules uh, to polish for small systems, but this seems to be quite appreciated. I found a repo, but I don't know if there's if there's an, a front page for it. Um, I think if you Google Gromax stage, and it's then you'll find it. 
Uh, yeah, so that's that's extremely useful because this is this is very tedious and uh, annoying, and it's also e easy to make mistakes. Yeah, so it's on the it's on the grow it's on the on the, on the GitLab on our GitLab Gromax server actually. So if you if you search stage and Gromax, you will find it. Yes, and that's very that's very useful. Mm -hmm. um, there are other tools, I think, also, but uh, I don't know. I mean, there's there's Charm GUI and these kind of things, but I'm yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar familiar enough with that to to say if that should work also for such cases. Uh, I think I, I'm I have a little bit of knowledge of Charm GUI. I think it does. I think it. it I think it. I think it. Yeah, I think it can work. Um, but I, I think I think it's. Although I think they, I think it's aimed at like maybe slightly larger molecules, but it may it may work for the smaller ones too. Um, but uh, it's been it's been a little while since I've taken a closer look at that. Um, uh, so, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, there's going to be questions about any any topic in Rome. This was somewhat mm. performance related, but uh, there's also yeah. other questions about development, about algorithms, uh, mm. anything. Any more questions? I can't see any more questions coming through yet. Um, uh, so. um, I mean, I, I suppose, I suppose, you know, if, if if anyone if if anyone has any 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 question really about oh here we go, uh, is Replica Exchange fully functional in Gromax? Um, um, because uh, there's papers there's papers around using Plume Plumes with Gromax to do this. Yeah, so that's that's uh, a useful question, I suppose. So there's temp temperature replica change, which is fully implemented in Gromax. Mm -hmm. And there's a few other things one can exchange, but temperature replica change is not so useful by itself because you need large temperature gaps, especially if you have solvents. So what's much better to do is what's called REST, which is replica exchange solute tempering. Mm -hmm. And there you um you formulate it differently instead of changing the temperature you scale down the hamiltonian which in the end is the if you scale down the full hamiltonian it's the same as changing the temperature because instead of making the kinetic energy higher you lower the lower the potential energy landscape which is relatively does the same thing but then you can you can scale different parts of the hamiltonian differently so you can for instance only do your protein and not the solvent and uh -huh. that makes the it it much easier to have larger temperature gaps, so to say, I mean, it then turns into Hamiltonian gaps. Mm. Um, so that's a far more efficient way of running it. And Gromax can't do that. So I would really like to have that, but then someone needs to implement. I'm not doing this myself or my students. So I don't, but that's, okay. so the, for that, I think that's probably one of the main applications for Plume for MD, for replica exchange in Gromax is that to use the REST protocol, which yes. is far more efficient, but then you have the overhead of Plumed, which since it's not, yeah, it's it just hooks into Gromax. It's yeah, it needs to mess around, maybe write stuff to file, change topologies, and these kind of things. So that gives you uh, some performance loss in that sense, but you have a lot of algorithmic performance gain. So mm -hmm. that that we would like to have integrated. But there, are, there, are, I think Plume can do many things more even than that in terms of replication. Just part of that. Mm -hmm. Will there be some two?
Lingo Max for machine learning or deep learning in um that's uh, the question is uh, is it's about analysis i suppose um I, 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 I think guess. that we would leave that we would leave to others so, so i don't see why this should be integrated in gromax i think the, the gromax tool should give you access to the basic molecular properties you want like dihedrals or principal components and these kind of things and then one can build there are now loads of nice machine learning networks uh, mm -hmm. tools around there so you can you can build on top of that by extracting the properties you want and feeding it in there so yeah. the thing one would could have what would help is to have um, a python interface i suppose in gromax to feed those things maybe real time or couple them easier so we're mm -hmm. working on extending the python api to make it easier to to interface things and do things maybe on the fly so that might help and that's there but then it should yeah that will make it even easier to, to link in some machine learning python framework yeah. the other thing is if it's force field so that's a uh, development now is having better force fields using machine learning yes. and qm simulations so that's something we likely will implement in gromax but that's a rather large project so it will take some some time you first need to find the resources and then do sure. it Fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Okay. Um, I mean, if there, if there are no more questions for uh, for for, for Burke, um, I mean, we could also we could also open have some questions for some of the yeah for, for either Anila or Pecho if they if if they're still around and willing to sort of answer a question or two. Um, it just, I mean, we could, we can, if, if there, if there are any sort of remaining questions that anybody, anybody has. Um, otherwise, um, otherwise we could, we could, we could finish five minutes early, I suppose. <laughs> Um, uh, in which case, um, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to thank, uh, thank you, Burke, for a, a, a very, a very, very useful and interesting sort of uh, uh, Q&A session. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, and also, I'd also like to thank, uh, I'd like to thank the other, other, um, other speakers today, Anela and uh, Pecho for for, for the, yeah, for their talks and and the practical session, and I'd also like to thank everybody else here who's uh, who's been sort of um, who's been sort of uh, who's attended and sort of paid, you know sort of um, been listening and paying attention and everything and ask and asking questions, of course. Um, so yeah, um, so thank you very much, everybody. Um, and uh, and I hope you I hope you're willing to come back for tomorrow's session on integrative modeling, blocking, and pre-engine calculations of biomolecular systems, which I believe uh, starts 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 at the same time again uh, tomorrow at uh, nine thirty.